What the hell was that? Not gonna lie, I started this show with purely evil intentions. Miraculous Ladybug, aka Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, is a show that has been on my shipping radar for years now. It does what the f numbers on YouTube, kinda looks like those old Barbie movies you pretended to hate, yet somehow, it still kicks ass. And of course, it is a shipping nightmare. Everything about this show promised that it would be cute, wholesome, and extremely problematic, and holy sh it did not disappoint. Now I made a video a while back about my favorite shipping disaster, so now it's time for another one. And they didn't skip on the spice for this, because it takes a special kind of disaster to take two people and squeeze four, yes that's right, four different ships out of it. We may hate the love triangle, but you gotta respect the love square. It giveth, it taketh away, with zero care for how weird this shit looks on the outside. It's dumb, it's toxic, it's shipping, and I'm your captain and leading you on yet another clusterfuck of a fandom. Bitches, bros, non-binary hoes, let's talk about Miraculous. Okay, so Miraculous is an interesting show, as it almost defies description. Being a French, Italian, and Japanese co-production about a French-Japanese Power Ranger whose main villain sits around in his house all day spying on teenagers, and using magic butterflies to turn them into supervillains when they have an off day. And no, this isn't a Mad Lib, but it does feel like that sometimes. But the real drama isn't coming from the grown man turning babies into death machines, it's the longing felt by two teenagers in the most overcomplicated relationship you've ever seen. Because this girl, Marinette, is in love with this boy, Adrian, who is the master of mixed messages and keeping her solidly in the friend zone, so that he can pursue his real crush, Marinette, in spandex. Except she ain't into cat boys, so friend zone he goes. Making this basically Superman fighting himself over Lois Lane, but with Lois also being a superhero. Now it isn't as confusing as it sounds. Okay, that's a lie, but it's pretty easy to understand once you start watching the actual show. See, this little double Superman situation runs on the dilemma that they can't know each other's secret identity. Because this old dude said so. Even as they find out everyone in their homeroom gets to be a superhero that everyone else knows about, proving some rules really are just for poor people. But this is the rule that keeps the love square from collapsing to a singularity point known as healthy relationship. So we are forced to respect it, as it is this desperate farce that the fandom somehow how was able to make even weirder by creating ships for all four of them. So yes, I am going to be here all day, because it's that kind of fandom, and these are the characters. Marinette is pretty much every cringe thing you ever did in school, wrapped up into a hot mess. This girl is an optimist, which you need to be when life is giving you L's more than oxygen. I mean, she's funny, talented, loyal, but when she sees that white jacket, she falls apart like Jenga. AKA she's me in middle school, minus the talent. I can see why people like her so much, because 90% of every writer's job is to make a character relatable, and there's nothing like being a mess when it matters to drive home how much you hate your life. But outside that, you're a great person, you think. But the truth is, she's on that petty juice every time someone so much as breathes on Adrian. Girl got homework, real work, and supervillains to deal with, yet she still finds the time to make Notice Me Senpai her default. With her entire class knowing what's up, except for the idiot in question. She's great though, on her own. If it isn't about Adrian, she would have life on lock, winning fashion competitions, listening to the only sane woman in this show, and being an otherwise upstanding citizen. People love her for a thousand different reasons, and all of them are personal, which is perfect, because the unsaid rule of shipping is that while you can love two characters together, appreciate their chemistry, and how they just seem to make each other happier than all the other options on the table, the times people just love that one character, they Insert themselves into another one to vicariously date their crush, aka every Zutara fan ever. Look, I do like Marinette. She's pretty much the main character with the most shit to deal with on her plate, and I am a sucker for teen hero shenanigans. She's extra though, and not the good kind, because when she's not bouncing between facial expressions that will make Jim Carrey blush, four seasons of obsessing over a guy has only just now befriended has gotten old, and the grown ass men writing the show haven't realized how creepy they're making this girl. I mean, she has his weekly schedule charted down to the hour. That's what we in the not crazy world call stalking. With every problem in your life can be solved by asking to go to the movies, you know you fucked up. Because making your personality loving an airhead doesn't work unless you're the one wearing the cat ears. She's stolen his phone, rubbed her face on his sweaty controller, and nearly kissed his statue. Which spoiler was him. It even smells exactly like him! Why haven't we been molded together in the plaster of destiny, marble to marble?
God, that moment nearly killed me and it made me want to strangle his dumb ass for letting it happen. She's a fangirl and it's all fun and games till she shows up in his room with a handgun. But again, this is the area where I blame the writers. Someone needs to talk this girl down because she's pretty much yandere with a test tube sometimes. But then she's on the level the rest of that 85. And my neck just can't take that whiplash. Especially when she transforms into her alter ego, Ladybug. Which okay, they're just the same person. Yeah, Adrian and Cat Noir are different enough I can see where the fan divergence happen, but Marinette's only difference is that she's in tights and has her game face on. Which for fans basically translates to Marinette, but Kim Possible, super serious hero woman. People like to pretend this anxiety-free Marinette is not a hot mess, but the truth is, there's not that much of a difference. Sure, fandom loves to make Ladybug this fun but no-nonsense hero, did it? But then proceeds to ignore her when she turns around and does some really stupid shit like giving her crush special treatment or talking shit public out of spite. I get the appeal of having that tough confident side where everyone can see, but the other side, yep, still a hot mess. It's just selective memory playing a trick on you, I can't complain as it makes the shipping nightmare I'm about to step into viable instead of the madhouse we know it really is. And speaking of madhouses, Adrian. One of the most popular theories about Adrian is that he isn't real. That's right. People think that this little Prince Charming was made by his daddy and mommy getting together and using magic to create a perfect child. It's a valid theory, but if I was his dad, I'd check my warranty because this kid is a fucking mess. The show's creator compares Adrian to Snow White, and I'm 100% on board with that. Because besides being an emotionally abused child, this kid wouldn't know a solution if it slapped him in the face. A model and homeschooled till he was 13, this kid saw public school as an improvement so you know something's wrong here. He's pretty much the school's eye candy with every non-lesbian in the room trying to get in his pants, waiting for the boys to step in and claim that free real estate. Adrian isn't dumb, he's that classic problem of a kid who has everything given to him and terrified his dad will rip it all away. He's living under a guillotine and it makes him grateful for everything that he has, even when what he has is shit. He's famous, plays piano, cute, and his home life is a mess. He's the internet's favorite type of male because they can see him struggling when no one else can and that makes you feel just so special. Which I could make fun of this archetype, but as a raven stan, this kettle can't say Jack. If Adrian wasn't miserable, he wouldn't be nearly as interesting as a character. Adrian took what Loki did and perfected it, with fans committing war crimes to be the one to tend to his poor abused soul, even as they ignore all the problematic shit. He's when asked how do you one up stalking, Adrian told Platt to hold my wine. His miraculous may be a cat, but it should have been a skunk, cause this boy is Pepe Le Pew. Cat Noir or Chat Noir, I constantly switch between the two and I've just kind of given up. This superhero identity takes Adrian and makes him Peter Pan, but with somehow more consent issues. Cat Noir is everything Adrian wishes he was, fun, playful, and not at home. Cat is the screaming theater kid dying to burst out of Adrian's soul and landed right on his face. But while he may always be joking around, he doesn't treat the job as a joke. He'll get it done, but at like 11.59pm, so just barely. Fans love pretty boys with problems but they love flirts that are sobbing inside even more. It pretty much takes the I can fix him trope and adds someone who is actually fun to be around with a caveat that he'll cry on your shoulder showing how vulnerable he really is. And yes, it's I ship this character type too. Blitz. At least Blitz is stuck in hell so no one deserves respect. Cat doesn't because he can. Marinette may know when Adrian stops to take a leak but Cat's waiting outside the door joking about how funny it'd be if he just walked in. Because this kid loves Ladybug and has absolutely no idea how to do it besides not being himself. She's his scratching post because he is always trying to rub up against it and it's kind of stopped being funny. Like, ha, huh, cool, he's just flirty with all his friends. When the lady says no and he keeps doing it, you're not romantic, you're an asshole. Always be waiting. Cat would hear that and think it's the most romantic thing he's ever heard. Meanwhile, I'm already calling the cops. This boy doesn't know how to act, but he's fun so everyone on the outside will overlook it. Even when he's doing insane stuff like dying 26,000 times before admitting that this scheme to get close to Ladybug isn't working. If that isn't restraining order material, I don't know what is. But again, fun and tragic so people will find an excuse for everything and call it romantic. These two are a disaster that I want in my life and easily prime fodder for shipping. But the fact that people are shipping Cat with Marinette and saying it's its own thing, if you can credit Miraculous with anything, it's that it's taken shipping to a whole new level. And of course, we're gonna have to fucking talk about them. Starting with the prime ship, Adrianette, aka the only one that actually exists. Adrianette is ruined by the fact that it is inevitable. The culmination of two idiots finally coming to see the value in each other and seeing each other for 
who they really are. Renette will realize the person she put on a pedestal has been standing by her side this entire time, and Adrian will realize that the person he's been pining for has been doing the same for him. It would mean them reconciling the person that they thought they knew with the both sides of their identity, Adrian is secretly an idiot goofball with baggage, and Marriott has been struggling with this double life. If you've been shipping these two in any way, this is what you're aiming for. Then of course, like always, the addicts in the stands gotta make it weird. Pitching idea where they don't know each other's identity, so Marinette is having the time of her life while Adrian gets that rebound. There are merits to both ideas. There's not, but let's pretend for a moment that there is. Without revealing the superhero, we pretty much give Marinette the boyfriend she always wanted and the cute school romance everyone can relate to. Because with all the theatrics of the show, this is what the show's really been about. Two kids with a lot going on, finding love and support with each other. With all the weird stuff being solved by them finally hooking up, allowing this ship to exist in peace and harmony. Yeah, I hate this ship the most. Hope you're next okay, because it's time to hear my actual opinion on this ship, which is fuck it. Yeah, I get what this ship could be, and like the sun expanding and swallowing the earth, it's inevitable. But these riders have gone way too cocky, and, and how long they're willing to believe that we'll wait for these two to hold hands. The same problem I have with every romance anime ever. They throw out lots of side quests, but make Endgame obvious. And because writing them together would be too much realism for your average 10 year old, they delay them getting together till it's time for credits, and in a post credit we get to see their clones aka offspring. If you're wasting 99% of your story about why two characters aren't together, you're telling a story about why they shouldn't be. And maybe one of the side quests in the middle was right for them all along. Or maybe the boys should have just fucked. Star Season 4? Yeah, I'm coming for you too. But this is the trap Adrianette has fallen into. Sure, you can give me all these little milestones, but we know it's gonna happen, so it needs to just step on the gas and get it over with. Before any more of the fandom starts to resent it for holding the show hostage, and to do something crazy like finding other ways to ship them. Which brings us to the variants. Lainor is exactly what it sounds like. What if Ladybug decided to give into the flooring and date the frat boy. What holds this ship together is that while Adrianette gets all the cute moments that make your heart flutter, these two have an actual relationship. They're dealing with their bullshit, the near-death experiences, the villains, but through all of it, always have each other's back. They may not know who they really are, but they're ride or die. And while Ladybug can struggle with what to do, Cat is always there to help her out, which is something that we can all aspire to, though I would love if he would just social distance. What also makes this a peak ship is how it's the only one of the four where we are conceivably see Ladybug whooping Cat's ass. He's a man -ho and an idiot who needs to get his shit checked by a strong female. Marinette is cool, but nice is her default in this dumb blonde needs a little more than a talking to and she'd just be too happy to be dating him to be bringing that energy. What also makes this an above average ship is that after who knows how many fucking seasons of will they won't they bullshit, seeing Ladybug drop the obsession for a boy she barely knows to date the person who, who's always been there for her would be more satisfying than the Adrianette glacier hanging in the distance. You'd also enjoy the inevitable reveal of their identities after a long oh I still have feelings for blank, leading them to laugh it off as they realize it was never a problem in the first place. Now this ship isn't without its problems either, mainly it's been cat creeping for most of the show. Even Ladybug flirting back sometimes doesn't make the fact that he does it even when she says no. It also hangs very much in the personal fantasy that both of them have created for their superhero lives, leaving their personal issues unaddressed like Adrian's dad being a supervillain and his mom being a pop school in the basement, or Marinette struggling with her promotion to regional manager. Leonor is great in concept but ignores the underlying personal issues that they both need to deal with and lets them indulge in a personal fantasy. Speaking of which, Ladrian, or Adrian but Ladrian we're calling it. The ship where everyone gets exactly what they want without having to put in any work. Like I get this is a ship because with the BS mask rule, it pretty much solves all their problems. With Adrian getting Ladybug and her getting Adrian without either of them needing to do anything but show up. Ladybug should be thankful she got to keep the mask on because she'll be blushing through every second of this. While Snow White over here can keep up his shy boy routine. This is for all the people who prefer Adrian to Cat but don't like Marinette. It's pretty much Adrianette with a new coat of paint and without any of the mess of them realizing that they've been lying to each other for years. Now I know it sounds like I'm disrespecting this ship a little bit because I am. Outside of a couple moments, this ship doesn't exist. It's fan fiction. It's the second Adrian gets his chance, he's dropping the fact that he's Cat, because Impulse Control isn't his middle name. Yes, I did watch Cat Blanc. It was a waste of time. For all of you who love a tragic soft boy, I guess I can see where you're coming from. But to me, this feels like Marinette slander. Feel free to lecture me on the merits of this one in the comments, and I'll do my best not to call you basic. This one's just hilarious. If Ladrian is one where everyone is happy, this is the one where everyone's miserable. With Marinette kicking Cat under the table while he makes another fist joke to the waiter. No one is getting what they wanted here, and that makes it all the better. Because the appeal here is, is that Marinette struggles to speak to Adrian. Lainor is all about her keeping Cat in line, while this one's her cleaning up his act. 
the two of them growing to appreciate the sides of themselves they're not fully in love with. Makes it a learning experience for both of them to see past their preconceived notions of who a person is. This is the one ship where you really have to go out of your way to make excuses for it to happen. It's so out of left field, of course the show had to go bring it up, with both parties agreeing that this is a terrible idea, but go through with it anyway, because reasons. This is easily the best couple with the most issues, and that's what makes it interesting, because no one wants to be here, but we want to see them make it work. It's pretty much the start of every romantic couple in movies, and while you may be sick of that trope, it works for a reason. If slightly dysfunctional couples are your thing, this is the ship for you, and I salute my fellow degenerates. Because while this is going to make Marinette go gray early, the silver bug pun by Cat will be worth it. And in a world where I'm stuck waiting for this shit to end, imagining them not getting what they want is the least I can do, because just peeking in on season 4, best boy Luca got screwed, and Kagami was always too good for Adrian anyway. But yeah, remember when I said this was a love square? I lied. It's a love dodecahedron, and everyone is miserable, not even counting the weird shit they're doing with Chloe. And I might have to make a second video just for all this. I guess in the end, this show is pretty much everything I want in a fandom. It's a dumpster fire with fun fan art and people losing their minds for no goddamn reason. In a confusing French import that most of you only watch through GIFs on Tumblr. It's confusing, it's childish, it's shipping. And you might want to just check it out. Because if you love confusing train wrecks that aren't trashy, these are the ships for you. We all know how it's gonna end, because at this point the writers are just pushing to see how much they can screw with the audience before they all snap and kill them. Which is a level of sadism that I can respect. Alright, that's all. Subscribe if you want to hear me talk about all things cartoons, be it shipping reviews or sarcastic summaries. Click the bell icon, because subbing doesn't mean shit anymore. I'd say comment, but most of you are already angry enough, so it's not really needed. Thank you all for watching. Luca and Net for life.